Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James M. Plato for MediaMonarchy.com. Too much Monsanto creates issues in the brain. We've got that story, plus Fedbook rolls out its cryptocurrency. But first, all the cyber attack stories from the past few days can't be linked, can they? An interesting article from The Organic Prepper that begins with, The U.S. is hacking Russia's grid. Last Saturday, The New York Times reported, rather irresponsibly, it seems that the United States is escalating their digital incursions into Russia's electric power grid in a warning to President Vladimir V. Putin, according to nameless current and former government officials. Then, Russia's upping their game against us. After that irresponsible reporting by the New York Times, Russia responded, of course, with their own anonymous sourced stories. So our own U.S. grid is, of course, being probed by hackers, as has been reported many, many times. Ars Technica reported that the very same hackers who caused issues in the gas and oil industry with the Triconex malware are poking around in the American, or at least North American, power grid. Oh, and South America had a massive blackout over the weekend. Millions of South Americans, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, were in the dark for hours this past weekend. Although officials don't currently have proof of cyber malfeasance, they were not ruling it out, at least at the time. And we kind of add all these things together, and it seems like the prospect of a massive cyber attack seems a lot more likely. I think we've called it the I-911, James, and I think just to put on top of that, your fantastic new video on four times the U.S. threatened to stage an attack and blame it on Iran. It's a really good one for folks who haven't seen it. You know, no no commentary, no stuff. It's just the clips from the horses' mouths talking about how they create terror opportunities. James? Exactly. Crisis initiation, as Patrick Clausen called it. It's hard to initiate a crisis, but we can blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. So if you haven't seen that, please uh, watch it. If you have seen it, please spread that because that is important information as false flags are clearly fluttering in the air these days. And this is an important aspect of that, something we've talked about here on New World Next Week going back at probably a decade by this point, cyber false flags, virtual flag terror, which is the next stage of this game and uh, probably in the long run going to be more used than incidents in the Gulf of Oman or elsewhere. And boy, uh, there's so much to unpack in this article. I hope people will go through it and look at, because I was sitting there watching these stories roll through the newsfeed and thinking, well, clearly we've got to tie these together. Well, here's an article that does at least attempt to somewhat tie them together. Although I do note that although I we have referenced the organic prepper before and they have had some good articles, I'm not familiar with Daisy Luther, the article of this particular article, uh, the author of this particular article, but it is unfortunate that it does ha contain some blue-pilled normie garbage about, uh, oh, the New York Times irresponsibly is reporting on these American uh, aggressions against Russia. It's irresponsible to let the enemy know about what we're doing, I guess. And a friend of mine with a military intel background said it's similar to how we have nukes so that other people with nukes won't nuke us. Yes, we must have nukes so that the other, the bad guys with nukes won't hurt us. Uh, we must have cyber weapons so that the bad guys with cyber weapons won't hurt us. We must have biological weapons so that the bad guys with biological weapons won't hurt us. And oh, by the way, we're secretly using them behind the scenes all the time. That that is nonsense. So it's unfortunate to see that garbage being um, perpetrated by an ostensibly alternative outlet. But that aside, these stories are clearly linked. This is an incredibly important thread that's going on right now. And it ties in in so many ways, as I say, to the prospect of virtual flag terror, because of course, in the cyber world, how do we, in the general public, the hoi polloi, how do we have any clue where any of these ta attacks are actually originating from? All we have is the word and say-so of officials. Well, we checked the server logs, and it's clearly coming from Russia. Oh, okay, well, then I guess Russia did it, and they're the enemy. Let's go attack them. That is the ultimate false flag, because they don't even really have to do very much. They just have to tell you that they've been attacked. Um, so that's that's very worrying. Also, of course, this ties into exactly what we were talking about last week with the Russia-China summit and all of the stuff moving on the geopolitical table in that direction. And it, it I think it ties into uh, another article, this one via oilprice.com about uh, declassified the Sino-Russian master plan to end U.S. dominance in the Middle East. There are clearly a lot of confrontations going on, virtual and real world, economic, political, military, all of these are converging right now on stories like this one. And th that's why I think we have to follow the thread of this story. And in order to do so, let's remember, as both you at Media Monarchy and me at Corbett Report have pointed out many times, Stuxnet, which was one of the most uh, powerful and widespread uh, cyber weapons ever 
at least officially acknowledged uh, so far, it, it was a, now 100% confirmed a U.S.-Israeli cyber weapon that was launched at Iran. So, yes, oh, we need cyber weapons to protect us from the bad guys. No, garbage, nonsense. We, the American government, has nothing to do with me, but anyway, the American government is using these weapons against its erstwhile enemies right now, and uh, it is the beginning of warfare. This is warfare by another name. It's warfare by another means. World War III is already underway. It's just not called World War III, and it doesn't involve tanks on a battlefield. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff that is going to launch just things that are unimaginable. And uh, I hope people are keeping their eye on these stories. So I'm glad you mentioned Stuxnet, actually, because that helps me. I'm going to throw in a couple of uh, related here at the end because I call it media monarchy. I think there's another kind of story to to pile on to the power grid kind of psyops going on. And I think that, that a lot of people missed. Chernobyl breaks HBO record and thoroughly beats Game of Thrones. HBO's Chernobyl is becoming one of the top miniseries of all time in the eyes of both professional critics and lay viewers. It aired to overwhelming universal acclaim, boasts the highest fan score on IMDb, and single-handedly increased tourism in Ukraine by double digits. Its ratings through the roof as well, beating an important record previously held by Game of Thrones in terms of digital viewership. So meanwhile, then, much like there's the report for the New York Times and then Russia comes out with their own, Russia hates HBO's Chernobyl, decides to make its own series, where they note one theory holds that Americans had infiltrated the Chernobyl nuclear plant. And many historians do not deny that on the day of the explosion, an agent of the enemy's intelligence services was present at the station. The heroes, then, will not be the scientists, soldiers, and civilians who help prevent a further spread of radiation, but rather the KGB officers trying to thwart the CIA operatives. So it seems like no matter kind of which trough you like to get your controlled media from, whether you're, I, I'm reading the Financial Times or you're like, hey, I'm watching HBO, it's all new Cold War hype all the time, James. Our second story here on An Important New World Next Week, episode 377, as we are looking at the beginning of summer. And one that I missed. So I covered this just this uh, past day here on my morning show. And again, you kind of wonder why I didn't hear much about this story. Trump executive order makes simpler path for GMOs. Agricultural biotech received a boost late. But this is two Tuesdays ago. So I believe that was on June 11th as President Donald Trump signed an executive order. Yeah, ruling by executive order. Remember, he used to criticize that previous guy for doing that. Streamlines the federal review process for products like genetically modified seeds and livestock. The executive order noted the importance of biotech on the nation's food supply and agricultural needs and supports a longtime goal of Trump's support of loosening restrictions on the use of genetically modified crops and animal products. The order points to the industry as a means of meeting food production needs, even though I'm pretty sure all the studies show that it doesn't actually meet those needs, improving crop characteristics, increasing the nutritional value of crops, and, you know, eating a bunch of food with glyphosate in it. In order to meet all those fantastic needs, the executive order noted that a streamlined review system that fosters public confidence in biotechnology, so they need to psyop you into believing it, while avoiding undue regulatory burdens, is critical. Ahead of the signing of the executive order, CNBC noted that the action has been seen as a way to bolster the bottom line of farmers caught up in the trade war with most favored nation, China. The executive order came days after the U.S. told the World Trade Organization it was planning to revise regulations on importing GMOs. As reported by Reuters, we will include the link to the original press release, the executive order, whitehouse.gov, executive order on modernizing the regulatory framework for agricultural biotechnology products. James, I know it's a big surprise, but yet again, Swamp Thing lies. Yeah, Trump 2020. It's not MAGA anymore, though. It's uh, MAGMA, Make America Genetically Modified Again. Uh, yeah, anyway, ugh. What just total disgusting nonsense, but no nothing out of the ordinary. However, we should keep in mind a couple of things. I mean, first of all, obviously, this is uh, this is just another facet of the M Monsanto, Bear Santo re revolving door um, that has been in operation for decades now and continues to march along. So they will continue to get whatever regulatory approval and st streamlining they need in order to continue foisting their Frankenfood monstrosities on America and the world, um, by extension. 
Um, but also, let's uh, let's tie this into a story that's just breaking in the last few hours as we're recording this. Uh, you remember, of course, back in May when uh, a jury, a California jury, awarded two billion dollars in damages uh, to com- uh, plaintiffs in a case against Monsanto. Bear Santo in a uh, California court. Well, the latest coming from internationaljournal.com, Bear at Buyer asks judge to overrule $2 billion Monsanto roundup verdict. Perhaps more colorfully reported in the St. Louis Business Journal, Buyer calls $2 billion Monsanto roundup jury award unhinged. <laughs> so surprise, surprise, they're trying to argue that. But keep in mind, there have been some legal judicial successes against this monstrosity um, in recent months, and that might be part of why they're they're panicking so hard and trying so hard to get uh, other aspects of their business streamlined. If people need a reminder as to why this monstrosity is to be resisted, I know we've referred to it here on the podcast before. Let's refer to it again. Episode 340, The Corporate Report, Buyer Plus Monsanto Equals a Match Made in Hell, I think outline some of the reasons why we should be opposed to genetically monstrous foods in general, but Bayer and Monsanto in particular as well. James Magma. That's, that's pretty great. You know, I love, you know, I love wordplay. Uh, I've also, I've got some more unhinged related on this second segment here on neural next week. As we jump back to October 22nd, 2015, just after a new poll showed that Ben Carson leading in Iowa, Donald Trump's verified Twitter account retweeted a controversial message aimed at the state and Monsanto. The retreat read, quote, Carson is leading in the polls in Iowa. Too much Monsanto in the corn creates issues in the brain. Trump deleted the tweet and said it wasn't his doing, rather someone else. They, of course, blamed a poor intern. This is a guy who, if you haven't figured it out yet, will tell you whatever you want to hear to get your vote. It kind of reminds me of every politician I've lodged for the last 41 years of my life. But remember, he went on the Alex Jones show to say, I'm going to make you proud. Just actually less than two months after he's he's acting like he's against, you know, Monsanto and Bayer and, and GMOs. He goes on the Alex Jones show to, of course, get the votes of all the truthers. Now, recently, an interview with Disney, ABC News, former Clinton campaign worker, George Stephanopoulos, he told Stephanopoulos, I think I know who is behind the 9-11 attacks, and I have a feeling the country's name starts with an I. I worry he's going to say it's Iran. It feels like it fits perfectly into all the Bolton, all the neocon garbage. It seems to just go that way. And, and the last little bit of icing on this dumpster fire as this all swirls around each other. Alex Jones denies child porn allegations, accuses his lawyer of a frame up. What a giant disaster. And we'll just move to our third and final story on this New World Next Week. James. Facebook announces Libra cryptocurrency. Facebook has finally revealed the details, and we've known this was sort of coming, but today was, you know, yesterday rather, it's a big kind of uh, announcement day. Libra is their cryptocurrency, which will let you buy things or send money to people with nearly zero fees. You'll pseudonymously buy or cash out your Libra online or at a local exchange, points like your grocery stores, and spend it using interoperable third-party wallet apps or Facebook's own Calibra wallet that, of course, be built into WhatsApp, Messenger, and all the other apps that they buy up from the competition. <laughs> Facebook released its white paper explaining Libra and its test net for working out the kinks of its blockchain system before a public launch in the first half of 2020. Fedbook won't fully control Libra, but instead get just a single vote in its governance like other founding members of the Libra Association, like Visa, Uber, Andreessen Horowitz, all of which have invested at least $10 million each into the project's operations. The association will promote the open-source Libra blockchain and developer platform with its own Move programming language, which makes me wonder if it's like, oh, are they writing their own sort of proprietary programming language for this? Plus, sign up businesses to accept Libra for payment and even give customers discounts or rewards. Facebook launching a subsidiary company, also called Calibra, that handles its crypto dealings and protects users' privacy by never mingling your Libra payments with your Facebook data so it can't be used for ad targeting. Your real identity won't be tied to your publicly visible transactions. 
But Facebook, Calibra, and other founding members of the Libra Association will earn interest on the money users cash in that's held in reserve to keep the value of Libra stable. James, that all sounds like a glowing press release from Zuckerberg. Can you maybe kind of add some context and subtext to this story? Well, I can, and let's do that by looking at the actual press release, or the white paper anyway. I'm just dipping my toe into the white paper. I haven't gotten to the technical paper yet, so if there are any techies in the crowd that have, I'm very interested in your analysis. Please leave them in the comments at CorbettReport.com, not on GooTube. Um, but let's uh, let's look at part of that white paper um, where it says, to ensure that Libra is truly open and always operates in the best interest of its users, our ambition is for the Libra network to become permissionless. The challenge is that as of today, we do not believe that there is a proven solution that can deliver the scale, stability, and security needed to support billions of people and transactions across the globe through a permissionless network. One of the association's directives will be to work with the community to research and implement this transition, which will begin within five years of the public launch of the Libra blockchain and ecosystem. Long story short, yes, the Libra, Libra blockchain and ecosystem is permissioned, not permissionless. If you have no idea what that means or why that distinction is important, you might want to go back to my report on the Bitcoin PSYOP where I explain the difference between permissioned and permissionless, open and closed blockchains, and how they can sell you total BS that's totally tied into a completely controlled infrastructure by calling it, oh, it's blockchain, it's cryptocurrency, and oh yeah, it's kind of permissioned, and oh, uh, the Libra Association includes such sterling partners as Facebook and uh, and all, all the, the usual suspects, including Andreessen Horowitz, Mark Andreessen being, of course, a big promoter of Bitcoin, and also on the board of directors of Facebook, eBay, and Hewlett-Packard. He's the founder of a big Silicon Valley uh, venture capital firm, Andreessen Horowitz, etc., etc. So this obviously ties back to the uh, the powers that shouldn't be. Well, let's just say that. And I'll tie this into a couple of stories from Cointelegraph about this. One report, Facebook's Calibra digital wallet will not be available in its largest markets, noting that... Uh, the Libra blockchain will be global, but it will be up to custodial wallet providers to determine where they will and will not operate. Calibra won't be available in U.S. sanctioned countries or countries that ban cryptocurrencies. So, of course, they're going to play by the rules, and they better play by the rules, because another update, Facebook Libra c cryptocurrency has its uses, says Bank of England Governor. Governor Mark Carney. So you can read more about that. I'll put the links in the show notes to this episode so you can read through those. But long story short, yeah, do you think they're going to play by the rules and do KYC and make sure that this is all completely controlled, permissioned, so that only certain people can validate the transactions? And of course, it's going to operate in the exact same way as MasterCard and PayPal and all these other control platforms that, oh, by the way, are part of the Libra Association as well. Surprise, surprise. Why are they funding their competition? Why? Oh, oh, it's not competition. This is all tied into the global control grid. And this is exactly what we were always expecting it to be. Bitcoin, fork, 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 Fedcoin. And we're almost there. Facebook coin is pretty much the same thing. I will just leave you, leave you on a, a somewhat humorous note, a little... Um, post on our Bitcoin. But why would someone buy Facebook coin, Mark? And I'll just leave it there. You go look at that post and it has a pretty good answer to that question. Um, but the real point is Libra. Libra. Oh, it's free. Oh, it's open. Oh, Libra. It's going to liberate the world. Of course, in the long tradition of calling things the exact opposite of what they really are, like how the Patriot Act eviscerated the Bill of Rights, Libra is going to free the world by giving you another controlled access point to the controlled global monetary grid. So as a little homework assignment for the people out there, let's see if we can come up with a better name for Libra. Uh, Fedbook coin, globalist coin, I don't know, something along those lines, but I'll leave it up to the creative listeners out there to leave their comments. Well, you, I'm glad you mentioned the Patriot Act. That kind of brings us, I think, full circle because we know that an I-911 is coming. As folks like Professor Lawrence Lessig have said, there is an I-Patriot Act sitting on the shelf waiting for the I-911 event. And they're going to have all the stuff set up. Oh, we've got your cashless situation. They've got it all worked out. James, of course, Visa is involved, I think, in, in the pushing of this. They were involved in sort of bringing Bitcoin into the mainstream and with BitPay and all of those kind of changes. Holy moly. All right. Well, that's new on next week, episode 377, as we are looking down the barrel of the summer solstice. 
for June 20th, 2019. As we close these episodes, I always like to remind folks I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 95 Mountain Time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. I would sure love folks to come check it out, James. All right, we're going to leave it there. Talk to you again next week. All right, buddy. Thanks. Take care.